Monitoring a property during the day and night is essential and the ZS GX5S gives us the option of wirelessly doing this either by using solar power with the included panel or running the camera solely from its 13,500 milliamp battery. It comes with a 2K resolution and 18 honeycomb lamp beads to deliver 800 lumens of light. There's an inbuilt microphone and speaker for two-way audio and your footage can be stored on a micro SD card or on the cloud using the app. You do get the option of seven days of free storage or you can take out one of their plans if you'd like a copy of your footage on the cloud. Everything that you're going to need is in the box except for the micro SD card. Installation didn't bring any issues and it's a matter of drilling three holes for each of the mounts, screwing them into the wall and then screwing the solar panel and camera onto the mount. These can be adjusted and positioned to your liking. Install the app by scanning the QR code in the booklet. You will need to set up an account by providing an email address, a nickname and a password. Password. Add a device and select floodlight camera. Make sure the camera is switched on and press next. Put in your Wi-Fi password and you will need to use the lens of the camera to scan the QR code which is being displayed on your mobile device. Now mount the camera where you would like it and the app will alert you if it's struggling for a Wi-Fi signal. Now select where the camera is located and press done. It's now set up and ready to use. Recording is done by motion detection. This means that no recording takes place if there is no movement detected. You can record 10, 20 or 30 30 second clips, but when the time threshold has been reached, it will take around 10 seconds for it to re-trigger and begin recording again. The detection sensitivity can be selected to fine tune when the camera triggers and records. Footage looks clear on our mobile phone and we can switch from HD to SD to save on bandwidth. Footage can be played back by either scrubbing through the timeline or using the alerts option and tapping on one of the recordings. This footage can be recorded and transferred to a computer to be played back and whilst it looks decent, there is some grain and artifact facting to the image but it's certainly good enough to identify someone. The memory card can be taken out and put into a computer and all the files are in MP4 format and they all play fine. Day footage isn't going to bring issues providing you haven't installed the camera too high. It does recommend that it's installed between 2 to 3 meters in height and if it's installed higher than this then expect quite a lot of missed footage. We put this to the test by installing it just over 5 meters from the ground during the day at long range and it recorded fine when we were walking up and down the pathway but if we were anywhere else in the frame then nothing got detected. We did change the sensitivity down to level 1 and nothing got recorded. Testing it at night from the same range and leaving the sensitivity at 1. This resulted in no recording taking place so we boosted the sensitivity all the way up to 10 and we still didn't get a recording. We did get a thunderstorm and torrential rain during the night and when we woke up we had all the water on the front of the lens of the camera. This did clear itself when the sun came out and this didn't occur again when we moved the camera to other locations. Locations. Moving it to around 3 meters from the ground and the detections were working great on the high sensitivity. So well in fact that they were being triggered by the cat. So tweaking that sensitivity will be required. Detections at night worked fine but those IR lights made our face look a little washed out which could make identifying someone a little difficult. Using the inbuilt light does really help and the amount of light that it gives out is great. There is pixelation to the image when transferred to our PC but it does look better on our mobile phone. Once it's been triggered you can have it stay on from 10 seconds all the way up to 30 minutes. It can also be scheduled to be switched on and off at certain times of the day. Having it lower than 3 meters resulted in everything recording fine even on the lowest sensitivity level. There is a little ghost in around us during the low light recording but it does the job and recorded us fine. Again the inbuilt light does a great job at brightening up the scene and it's so bright that I imagine it would startle unwanted visitors at your property. The light can be automatically activated if motion is detected and this worked great with the always turning on when someone was in the frame and the brightness of the light can be turned up and down to suit your scenario using the app. As well as the inbuilt light we also have an inbuilt siren which you can manually trigger in the app and this is quite loud. <coughs> We couldn't get this to work when movement was detected for some reason and even though everything was enabled, once we moved in front of the camera, the siren wouldn't automatically activate. This is a test of the internal speaker. There's not much in the way of delay, but we are set on 100% volume, so this is the loudest it can go. This is your audio from roughly around 2-3 feet away.
We can set zones where if anything moves inside the orange area, it will trigger the camera and begin the recording. Notifications to our phone work flawlessly. It didn't miss any of the detections and we received the notification within a matter of seconds. Battery life is totally dependent on if the lights and the siren are being activated, the recording time and generally how often the camera is being triggered. When we had the solar panel unplugged and we relied just on battery, we began on 85% battery and now it's down to 76%. That's with 10 days worth of footage and 268 detections. We then began to charge it using a wall socket and we left it charging for three and a half hours and the light on the front was still red but when we powered it back up the app says that the battery was 100% so you don't get a light on the front to alert you that the battery is fully charged. The rubber flap on the bottom has a push out section for the solar panel to be connected and this is a tight fit to prevent water gaining access to the connection. Charging using the solar panel has been fine. We started on 100% and after three days of recording, we are still on 100%. So it seems to do a good job at keeping that camera topped up. The app also allows you to share the camera so other people can get access to the live feed and the recorded footage.